In this video, we're going to look at how to use Excel's built-in data entry form. This is what the data entry form looks like. It displays all of your fields in a vertical list. The fields can be edited, you can add new fields, delete them, and you can even search for particular records. Okay, let's close this down and see how we open up the data entry form. The minimum requirement for using the data entry form is that you have a database with column headings, and I will put in at least one record. Now, unfortunately, by default, Excel doesn't display a button to open up the data entry form, but you can add a button to either the quick access toolbar or to your ribbon. Let's start by adding it to the quick access toolbar. What you would do is go to the customize button end of the quick access toolbar and then go to more commands where it says choose commands from select all commands and then you get a big list of buttons that you can add to your quick access toolbar and the button you're looking for is form there it is so I select it click on add click on ok now I get a form button on my quick access toolbar so as long as I've clicked into my data, I can click on the form button and it displays the data entry form. Now I'll close that down because the other thing you could do is you could add the button to the ribbon. Now to put a button for the form on the ribbon, for example, I'm gonna put a button on the data tab within the ribbon. What you do is you right click on any of the tabs, doesn't matter which one, customize the ribbon, then change this drop down to all commands. Search through this list for your form button. Then over here, select the tab that you want the button to be placed within. So that's data and I'll expand it. Then add a new group. I'm going to call this new group data entry. Click on OK, then just click on Add and it'll add the form button to your new group. Click on OK. Then if I go to the data tab on my ribbon, right over here, I can see I've got my form button. Click on it and it opens it up for me. So what does the data entry form actually allow you to do? Well, the first thing you can do is to edit an existing record. Say I want to change the telephone extension number here to 559. I'll just edit that field and then to confirm it, I just need to click on new and you can see up here, it's changed the telephone extension number within my spreadsheet. To go back to that record, I can just scroll up or I'll scroll back down, I can say find previous. If you've made a change to a field, let's change this to 560 and you change your mind, you can always click on this restore button and it will restore the value back to what it was before you made the change. Now you can also add a new record. So if I click on the new button, I'll type in my employee ID. To move to a new field within the data entry form, just press tab on your keyboard. The first name is Keith and then Howard. And I'll just fill in the rest of the record for you. Shortcut key for today's date, this person actually starts today, is control semicolon. Now to confirm the record, you can press enter, and you can see that it's added to the Excel spreadsheet. If I want to delete a record, I just need to navigate to it, and then press delete. It says displayed record will be permanently deleted, so I'll click on OK, and you can see it's deleted from your spreadsheet. I'm just going to close down the data entry form temporarily. And what I want to do is show you that you can add data validation to your data entry form. For example, I want to ensure that people only enter a three digit telephone extension. I'm going to select that cell on the data tab of my ribbon. I'm going to go to the data validation button. Under settings, I'm going to allow text length, data equal to, and the length I'll set as three characters. 
click on OK. Now in my spreadsheet, if I typed in a four character telephone extension, it doesn't allow me to confirm the entry. I'll cancel out of that. You can actually change that default message that comes up. So to do that, I go back to my data validation button. I go to error alert. And in the title box, I type telephone extension. And my error message would be something like telephone extensions must contain three digits. So if this time I try and type two digits, I get that nice little message that tells me what I've done wrong. Now let's try our data entry form with this new newly applied data validation. I'll click on the form button. I'll create a new record and I'm just going to go straight to the telephone extension field and I'm going to type in a four digit telephone extension. Now if I click on enter to confirm, you can see that actually allows me to add the four digit extension. Now, if I close down my data entry form, I'll explain why it's allowed me to do that. The data validation was applied to this cell, but unfortunately it hasn't copied the data validation down into the next record. If I select that cell, go up to my data validation button, settings, you can see it's allowing any value. I'll cancel out of that. Let's see how we can solve this problem. I'm just going to delete this second record. Now to ensure that any settings that you've applied to your first record, such as data validation or formatting, copy down to subsequent records, what you need to do is house your data in an Excel table. So once you've got at least your column headings, and your first record, click anywhere in your data and then go up to the insert tab on your ribbon and click on the table button. It'll just ask you to confirm where the data for your table is and also to confirm that you already have column headings. So I'm just gonna click on okay there. Now, if you don't like the formatting that Excel applies to a table, you can remove it by going up to the table design tab up here, table styles, clicking on the little more button and just clearing the format. And now let's add a new record by opening up the data entry form. Click on new, let's type in employee ID in. First name Keith Sullivan. Telephone extension, let's put in four digits. Line manager, Tim Francis, department IT, Start date, control semicolon for today's date. Now, if I click on new, it doesn't allow me to add the new record because the telephone extension must contain three digits. So if I retry, take away that last seven, click on new, you'll see that it does add the record, but it doesn't seem to add any fields that came before the field that had the data validation. So I don't know whether this is a bug within the data entry form, but what I do need to do is go back to that record and re-enter the data for this record. If I now click on new, it retains the information in those other fields. Watch out for that bug. It seems to me from experimenting with this that if you get a data validation warning message, any fields above the field that prompted the warning don't get remembered when you confirm the record. So you have to go back and enter those values. Now I'm going to close this down and now explore the other way you can use your data entry form and that would be on an existing database. Now to use the data entry form in this context all you need to do is click somewhere in your data. You don't have to put your data within an official Excel table to use this functionality. So once I've clicked somewhere in the data, I open up the form. And for example, I might want to search for all cash payments within my database. So what I do is I click on the criteria button 
And then in the payment type field, I type cash. And then if I click find next, it will take me to the first cash record that it finds. Find next, find next, find next, find next, find next. Now, if I go back to criteria, I could add further criteria to my search. For example, I might say in the date field, I'm looking for all dates after the 31st of May, 2021. So if I now click on find next, you see all these dates are after that date and they're also cash payments. Let's go back to criteria. I could also say that I only want to find products that start with three A's. In the product ID field, I'm going to type three A's and then use my wildcard character, the asterisk, to say that there can be any number of characters after the three A's. Basically, a starts with three A's criteria. So now if I go to find next, my dates are after May, my product ID start with three A's, and the payment type is cash. Finally, I could go to criteria and specify a particular store. I could say store 10, the transaction value greater than 9,000. Find next, and I only end up with one record that meets that criteria. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that is useful for you. If it is, please subscribe, give me a like, and I'll see you next video.